another Bearded Dragon Genetics video. Let's do it. What's up, YouTube? Today's video is about the translucent gene in Bearded Dragons. Now, before I get into the translucent gene, obviously I'll be showing you different versions of translucent with different colors and all of that. But I actually want to talk about one thing with translucent gene, and that is that there's a lot of people out there that have a lot of controversy around the translucent morph. And there's even people out there that don't prefer the translucent morph because of all the controversy around it. The problem with that is that the controversy really comes from breeders. And the breeders have to get on the same page as far as what they do with the translucent gene, as well as how they portray it and how they describe it to people that are looking to get into bearded dragons. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is partial translucent versus full translucent. And partial translucent is actually an incorrect term because what I've noticed is people that label them as partial translucent don't really treat them as a visual translucent bearded dragon. And therefore, they will breed these translucent bearded dragons to other translucent because they think partial trans is just a het trans that shows some translucent. And that is not the case. Partial trans, which is actually the, the correct term would be low expression translucent, is actually a translucent dragon that doesn't fully express the translucent morph. And that's why it's low expression translucent instead of partial translucent. So if you hear anybody call something partial translucent, just know that's 100% incorrect. There's no such thing as partial translucent. There's only translucent and het translucent. Now, when we talk about what the translucent gene does, I'll explain it more in the video. The translucent gene works in all morphs. It affects all morphs the same, whether it be leatherback, dunner, uh, hypo, trans, um, silky, whatever it is, all morphs are treated the same way. Zero, wiblets, they're all going to be treated the same way when it comes to translucent. Translucent is exactly what it sounds like. It makes a kind of a see-through, hazy color on the scales because of the fact that the scales are now kind of see-through. And I have some babies that I can show you that are translucent, and you can see how it really affects a baby versus an adult. So you can see how a translucent morph progresses with age. Um, but obviously, I'll show you some dragons that don't have the translucent gene as well, so you can see what it looks like with and without the translucent. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. First, we will start off with this normal bearded dragon that Courtney and Daniel from Bourbon City Exotics let me borrow for this video. Uh, so I really appreciate it. Give, give them a shout out. Go follow, go like, whatever you got to do, just go do it. They probably don't need a shout out, but they're getting one anyways. So this is a normal. She also has hats and stuff, but that doesn't really affect the way they look. So she looks pretty plain. No big deal. Just a regular bearded dragon. Now, she's still beautiful. Plain does. So when a lot of people get really like mad when you call their bearded dragon a normal. I'm like, it, it is what it is. Normal doesn't mean ugly. Normal just means that it doesn't visually have any morphs. Like that's what normal means. So you don't have hypo. You don't have translucent. You don't have leatherback, done or none of that stuff. So why get mad when somebody calls your dragon a normal? That's just how it goes. But a lot of people do get mad. Oh, it's not normal. Well, I'm sorry. Why'd you ask me? Uh, but that's just how it goes. So now the first thing I want to talk about with translucents is the eyes. First, I want to show you these eyes, pretty normal eyes. Get a close up on the scales here. And now we can go look at our first translucent bearded dragon. So let's do this side by side. And I want to do this side by side to show you the same morph. So hypo leather dunner. The one on the left here has translucent. The one on the right does not have translucent. You can see how much redder it is. So red and translucent is a very good combination because red translucents usually look a lot redder, a lot darker than a regular red. Uh, so therefore, a lot of people you'll see actually take out the hypo from their reds. And that's fine. No big deal. I just That's just what some people do. Um, I prefer hypo and everything because honestly, I like this orange rusted color. But that's fine with me. Um, some people don't like it. So this guy here is actually a partial translucent or a low expression translucent. So that's the last time I'm going to say partial. Now you should get the idea. Partial is not really a thing. It's low expression translucent. He has, if I can get his eyes to focus on here. Come on. He has normal eyes. Normal-ish eyes. His eyes still have a dark tint to them, but they're normal otherwise. His head also has normal scales. His body's translucent. His legs are translucent. His tail's translucent. 
but his head is very much not translucent. Probably from like this section down, translucent. Everything else, not translucent. The other thing with translucent bearded dragons, besides the scales being kind of see-through, is translucent bearded dragons also get blue bellies as babies. Now, because this guy is uh, low expression translucent, you also see some white patching on his belly, and that's because it's not all translucent. But that's just how it goes. Now, I'll show you this girl. You can see her belly. White. So there's a difference between the bellies, at least on the translucent morph, and the hypo without translucent. So now I'm going to show you another translucent in this, three, in this combination here, just so you can see it. From hypo with no trans, hypo part, low expression translucent, and then uh, hypo with full expression translucent. All right, so we have all three dragons, but they don't seem to be wanting to stay together. So I'll show you this guy first. Black eyes, pitch black eyes, that's translucent. His head also has a translucent look to it. I'll show you side by side if this guy will cooperate. You can see how the heads are different. This guy head is, has white patching versus obviously they both have a white patch because they were in shed but i'm talking about like the color itself being white on the sides of the head and uh, all the pa pattern on the head is white versus this guy's pattern is like orange and that's what the translucent does it actually brings out a lot more color in the reds versus without translucent or this guy's low expression with the part where it's not translucent doesn't have the color so this guy's actually a lot more intense red versus his older brother, only like a month and a half older, but that's that's how much older he is. Probably like a good bit bigger too. And then this female is also same clutch as that guy over there, but you can see all three of them and how they look different. I wish I could get them to stay together. They really. All right. That's as good as it's going to get y'all. But this, that's just showing you how the colors differ from a uh, full expression translucent to no translucent to low expression translucent. Why are y'all so flighty today? Man, y'all are killing me. Look at that. They don't care to be held. For some reason, they don't like to be in this box for it. We all like though. Um, but yeah, there you go. All three dragons with different levels of translucent. This girl is het translucent. That guy is low expression translucent. This guy is full expression translucent. Now let's keep looking at some more translucent. So switch up the color. Let's go yellow. Now this is just a quick video because this is a male and a female and it usually lasts about five seconds, but I'll show you their heads together. That's what the translucent does to the yellows. Hypo Het, uh, well, actually, not even het trans. She's possible het trans, but look at that. Pure yellows, has some oranges, no big deal. Translucent, the oranges become more vibrant because that's what translucent does. It works a lot with the red-orange color, and the oranges become more vibrant here. He's actually <laughs> pissed off again. This guy hates being in this box. I don't know why he hates being in this box, but he hates it. Uh, but actually, you know, a lot of dragons don't like being in this box, to be honest, but that's what the yellow does with translucent. I wish he would color up and show his true colors, but uh, he's a little darker than usual. Translucent still makes the yellows pop because that's what translucent does. It makes all colors pop, but because it works very well with the red oranges, it makes the yellows have a lot of orange undertones and a lot of orange tint to it. Therefore, his head has a lot of orange to it. And I mean, this guy also came from orange parents, orange and yellow parents. So there's obviously a good bit of orange in him anyways. And I'll show you one of his daughters that I held back. And she actually is orange with some yellow undertones versus this guy's yellow with orange undertones. And this is not the mom to the daughter, but I'll show you her as well, just to get it out of the way. And um, that is orange, yellow, and how it looks with hypo and how it looks with translucent. Or yellow orange, I guess it's yellow orange since the yellow comes first because it's the most out of the entire. I'm hoping to get some eggs out of these two. Maybe add some more barring to the to the look here. She has a good bit. Maybe we can add some over here. We'll see what happens. It's lasted a lot longer than I thought. I thought he would have gone crazy by now, but he hasn't. 
Huh. He's probably just too pissed off about being inside of this photo box, but that's besides the point. Super nice dragons. So here's the mom of the yellow girl I'm about to show you, the orange yellow girl. So that's why it's important to also, I'll make a video on color as well, but that's why it's important to also make sure what the parents look like. And not just the parents, but the grandparents, because the grandparents play a huge effect on the way the babies look like too. Because this girl is from yellow parents. She's very yellow herself. The male I paired her to came from orange and yellow parents. He's still very yellow with some orange undertones. The baby, on the other hand, not so much. And that's because of the translucent gene. Also because of the fact that his grandparents were orange as well. But the translucent really played a huge part on why, he, why she looks the way she looks. So let's go look at the baby. So here we go. You see what I mean? She has, she's practically orange. I'm not going to lie. She is an orange dragon. Her stripes are orange. Her back has a lot of orange into it. But then she has a lot of yellow as well. Like, there's a lot of yellow in there. She might, you know, change colors. They don't really do that. Usually they just get more vibrant as they age. But sometimes their colors just take a little bit longer to come out. But because she is translucent, all this orange is very vibrant right now. Yellows tend to take a lot longer to color up than reds. Reds usually come out of the egg with color. And you can kind of tell which ones are going to be the more redder ones. The most red ones, I guess. But yellows, they come out super dull. They come out almost green or brown. So you have to really wait for them to color up before you know exactly what it is they're going to turn into. So, so this girl still has a lot of aging to do. So she still could turn out a lot more yellow like her dad. But because of how much orange she already has, I doubt it. Uh, but the yellow could get more vibrant. So we don't know exactly what's going to happen yet. But she's still super nice. Still love the way she looks. I love the translucent gene in red. I love the translucent gene in orange. But the translucent gene in yellow kind of dulls out the yellow. But that it still looks amazing. It almost, if you could see this girl in person, she has a lot of green undertones. Like that's what the yellow and the translucent did. It creates like a green color. So you can kind of see it on the top of the head there. There's some green in there. And then on the spine, some green in there. So yeah. Translucent and yellow, not my favorite. I'll still do it because a lot of people like the green look of a, of the translucent yellows, but I personally like it too. I just don't like it enough to keep producing translucent yellows. I prefer my yellows with hypo and that's it. But like I said, I'll be making a video on color so you can kind of get an idea of how color differs from morph to morph. Um, but there you go. Super nice. Now, I only want to talk about one more thing with the translucent gene, and that is paradox. A lot of people seem to think that the only way to get a paradox is with translucent. So they think, well, if it's a visual translucent, it has a higher chance of producing a paradox. If it's head translucent, it has a higher chance of producing a paradox. I personally haven't done it because this is the first paradox I've ever made. A lot of breeders bigger breeders have been able to produce paradoxes from hypo to hypo or hypo to het hypo with no translucent and either parent. So my opinion, after 13 years of breeding, probably 100 to 200 babies, actually this year it was over 200 babies every year, I can say that the translucent gene does not cause a higher chance of producing a paradox because about 25% to 50% of my babies every year have been translucent. And again, this is my first paradox. He does happen to be a hypotranslucent, but that's besides the fact that's just the way it worked out for me. Um, so yes and no, the translucent gene can produce paradox, but it's not the only thing that can produce paradoxes. Paradoxes can come from hypos, can come from no morphs whatsoever. Um, it's just a paradox. It's a super unique looking bearded dragon. It's a dragon that you can't really, really replicate. I can breed this guy back to his mom if I ever wanted to. I don't really like line breeding, but I could. And more than likely, I will not get any paradoxes because that's not how paradox works. Paradox is not something that's recessive. Paradox is not something that's line bred. Paradox is exactly what it is. Stupid unique, stupid rare, and more than likely one in a million. Because that's probably what I, I've produced probably, I don't know, let's say at least 2,000 bearded dragons in my time breeding bearded dragons. And 
out of 2,000, I've only hit one. That's a very, very, very slim chance. That doesn't sound like recessive at all. That doesn't sound like incomplete dominant. That doesn't sound like something that's replicatable because I have done this pair before and this is the first time I've gotten a paradox. So there you go. And if you made it this far into the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything that I put out in the future. As always, peace.